Hi everybody! Hello Noga! How are you doing? Happy to see you! It's great to have you as always. No, it's okay. So we want to talk about the main theme of Game of Thrones, Season 8, Episode 2, which was waiting, and then some more waiting, and passing the time, and some more waiting for the inevitable death. Is a war coming, a war against death itself, literal death, literal dead people, and all the emotions that it conjures up in the living. And this is actually a theme that we've seen in many war movies, be them fantasy or more historical movies. Suggested techniques for the Marine to use in the avoidance of boredom and loneliness. Masturbation. Rereading of letters from unfaithful wives and girlfriends. Cleaning your rifle. Further masturbation. In a sense, it's the calm before the storm. And we know that the storm is coming. I mean, uh, there are differences between movies also in the way that the waiting is portrayed. Some of them are like endless waiting or being like in the watch and being alert that something might be happening. Yeah. The, uh, a soldier wa uh, watching something he knows that something might happen, but most of the time things don't happen, right? right. I mean, but here they know, they know that something will happen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. soon. Either way, it's going to be terrible. Whether they win or lose, it's going to be terrible. Even right. if they win, it's not going to be a happy, happy winning. And they have nothing to do but to wait. This is one of the most difficult things in, in the sense that um, basically by having nothing to do but wait, they are rendered passive and like, in a way, the object, because they have no free choice in the matter. No agency. No agency, exactly. And the one with the agency are the White Walkers. The dead people the who are supposed people. to have no agency at all. Exactly. So there's like this uh, reversal of roles and it's very difficult to, to contain this kind of uh, reversal. We can compare that maybe to some historical examples where you had people waiting for what they thought was an inevitable destruction. For example, uh, the, in Berlin, when the Russians were coming, the Soviets were coming, in the, in the last few days, it was Bedlam. The Russians notoriously rampaged, pillaged, murdered, raped on their way west from the Eastern Front. Mm -hmm. And the Berliners were like, they're just going to annihilate us all. It's payback time for what we did when we went over there. Uh, people like orgies on the street and people looting and just like abandoning all morals. Apocalypse now, like, yeah, it's going to be the end of days. Might as well grab all you can. It's like the dog-eat-dog -dog situation, like the natural state that Tobbs talked about, right? Right, but so here, there was a little sex. We're probably going to die soon. I ought to know what it's like before that happens. A little bit of drinking. You really think any of us are going to sleep tonight? Uh, it reminds me of this famous saying in Hebrew from uh, the book of Ishayahu, Jizayahu, whatever. Whatever. Jizayah. Jizayah. v'shtu ki machar namut. Eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Would you like a drink? Brought my own. In a way, it's uh, you eat and drink in order to celebrate life, but you also eat and drink to forget about death. So mm. it's like remember and also forget. And we all know that we're gonna die someday, but it's not the same as knowing... As facing death. It reminds me of uh, uh, Eric uh, Ericsson's he has uh, his own stages of development and uh, as opposed to the Freudian model which basically the personality is shaped until, you're, until the age of six, then Ericsson said that the personality is shaped throughout the lifetime mm -hmm. and that the final stage is like in old age, of course it's, they're not old, the characters, but they are facing death much like old people are in a way. And uh, he says that it's a stage where people contemplate about their lives and they try to, to think what they did right and what they did wrong. I took this castle from you. Let me defend you now. Think back to where we started. 
The perils of self-betterment. Do we want to grow old in this place? Yeah. Redemption or forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, or, or recognition. Fame, recognition, right? A knight of the seven kingdoms. This episode reminded me of uh, the Two Towers, the second of, of, the, of the trilogy, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But not the whole Two Towers movie, just uh, the waiting part for the Helen's Deep uh, battle. Forgive me. I was wrong to despair. I'm waiting a bit, Nicholas. We had time I get this adjusted. I bring word from Elrond of Rivendell. An alliance once existed between elves and men. We come to honor that allegiance. And the tension was built during that uh, very, very long part of the, of the movie when they were preparing for the monsters that were going to come over and for the incredible battle that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Over there it was all in the same movie. Here it was just... Uh, Whatever is going to be in the next episode, uh, the action, mm -hmm. it like echoed like uh, real uh, emotions from by soldiers. We saw it also in Generation X. There was uh, David Simon's uh, uh, Iraq War uh, miniseries. Uh, soldiers often say that waiting for battle is sometimes harder than the battle itself, where you have something to do. Yeah, you're not passive anymore. Being in a passive state without agency is difficult. Why? We need a sense of agency in order to feel uh, that we're potent, that we're capable, that uh, we have some kind of control over our lives. We need that kind of uh, illusion. Mm. And uh, here there's something that is uh, taking that away from us and uh, it's denying us of this kind of feeling. Right. And they are the ones that are going to decide where to attack from, from here, from there. Exactly. What they're going to do, how big is their army. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We don't know. We're just reacting. Yeah, exactly. You're reacting and not acting, and that's difficult. In Jarhead, for example, from what I remember... <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, the, the Iraqi war. I wasn't that... Uh, I was drunk most of it, but... Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, in Jarhead, uh, there's this kind of long waiting and nothing happens. And there's, you know... Which is a reality of war. Debating differences, such as Cuban versus Mexican, Harleys versus Hondas, left versus right-handed masturbation. Yeah, which is the reality of war sometimes. I mean, uh, especially, well, yeah. Long waits and then short spurts of uh, action. But to me, <laughs> oh, yes. the whole uh, scene also reminded me of uh, the never-ending story. Listen, the nothing will be here any minute. I will just sit here and let it take me away too. Then uh, it's also about uh, a bit what uh, Charlie said, the nothingness, right? You forget everything, you're not, not, no longer human. And uh, so waiting for that nothingness is very disarming. So John would be Atreyu here, maybe. Yeah, the he's the one. warrior, the warrior architect. Also, you could see that, you could hear that from uh, professional athletes mm -hmm. when they're waiting for, for a big game, a big match, a big race. Those days, the athletes say, are more intense and more excruciating than the actual game itself where you might lose, make a fool out of yourself, be great or be horrible. Maybe also, I don't know, like we are waiting for a child to be born, like, okay. When is it coming? But, yeah, but uh, here there's like a, when there's a game or where there's a child, I mean, more or less, maybe a child is more a bit, a bit more like that. I mean, of course, you know. A child is uh, a death of sorts. <laughs> Sorry, my child. In, in like a game, for example, then you have a date. You know when it's mm. going to happen. Here they're just waiting. They know that it's going to happen soon, but when exactly, they don't know. And that's also part of the passive, being passive. Like you, it's not up to you. It's right. not up to them to choose when it's coming. Right, so when you don't have control, mm -hmm. you become more anxious. You become more anxious and we can see how it affects the characters in the sense that they, it, it takes out a lot of uh, vulnerability. They're like uh, lethargic. <laughs> <laughs> but I was waiting for the miracle, for the miracle to come. 
sitting there on right. the wall. Right? right, and if we're all gonna die, so come on, who cares about patriarchy? Come on, Brienne, it's not Yeah, you exactly. Already. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're not gonna have to face the consequences <laughs> in front of the other knights. <laughs> Okay, so we opted this week not to go for a traditional uh, review, episode review. We'll have at least one more video about, uh, about the episode. Post your questions or comments for the Q&A. Tell us if you enjoyed the episode, you didn't enjoy the episode, boom, boom, boom. And also questions, serious questions, unrelated to Game of Thrones questions. And uh, we'll also post this week a video laying Brienne on the couch. Right. Talking about her psyche, her traumas. Also, check out our podcast, the link below. And that's it, we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. So, I wanted to let you know about the Thrones effect. How Game of Thrones conquered pop culture. This is the definitive book about the Game of Thrones phenomenon. It's a collaborative book with seven other YouTubers and two other GOT Academy collaborators and we take a bird's eye view about what Game of Thrones means from all kinds of angles and what has made it so successful. Is it the psychoanalytical angle, the way that we empathize with the characters? Is it the historical political angle? Is it so good because of the inspirations that preceded A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones? Is it the fact that it allows us to escape to a different world from all our trials and tribulations? Is it that it allows us to connect to other like-minded people from all over the world? Is it the characters that we can interpret so differently? Is it the fact that it deconstructs fantasy and creates a whole new genre? All of this and more is discussed in the Thrones effect. So if you want to get the ebook version, boom, the link is in the description. The audiobook and print edition hard copy coming soon. It's a very enjoyable read. Each chapter takes you to a whole different point of view. Each chapter has its own point of view. Reminds you of something? Boom, it's below in the description. Enjoy.